Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So every year I look forward to making a mermaid doll. It seems to be sort of a tradition for me and this year is absolutely no different. I was actually asked to be a part of something called an unconventional mermaid collab and it was with a bunch of other cool doll artists here on YouTube. There is the Hatter Dolls, Stefu Doll, Cairo's Workshop, Enchantarium, and Harley's Dollhouse. Everyone is linked in the description box, so check out that if you guys want to see a mermaid extravaganza. So I figured since I do a princess every year, I mean basically, right? Um, <laughs> princesses just really speak to me. <laughs> I would do the opposite of a princess, which is a knight, right? I guess a prince is maybe the opposite of a princess, but I guess it's all debatable. I'm doing a knight. Um, and I also figured, I think my favorite fish is a seahorse. I think thinking about it, so I think I'm gonna do a seahorse mermaid. I chose Gigi Grant for a couple reasons. If you look at her body and all the detailing, she has all this like gorgeous segmenting to her and I wanted to make a segmented tail. So I thought that the body would really lend to that. And also Gigi Grant is actually the first doll I ever repainted. So I just wanted to revisit it and see how I've improved because I, <laughs> I've improved. Okay, my first repaint looks busted. I do the basics of cutting off all the hair and putting the head in hot water to pop the head off, scraping around the inside of the head with a screwdriver, and then getting all the glue plugs out through the neck hole with needle nose pliers. I also took paint off of the face with some 100% acetone and Gigi's face mold is so cute. I like forgot. I remember Gigi's the first one that I ever saw, first Monster High doll, and I just remember being so impressed with the sculpting. It's just bringing back memories, y'all. I wanted her hair to be loud, so we're gonna be rerouting her with some yellow nylon from the Doll Planet. It's called Lemon. But I had to paint her head yellow with some acrylic paint first because that just makes it so that if there's any gaps in the reroute, it's not as obvious. To reroute, I take a little itty bitty piece of hair and I loop that around my reroute tool and then plunge it into the head. Many, many hours and hair plugs later, I'm gonna take some Fabri-Tac glue and squeeze that through the neck hole to keep all that hair in place. This hair needs to be boil washed so it lays flat, so that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking some boiling water and just pouring it over her head. So we have to take off her legs, and you can typically do this uh, with some wire cutters, but my husband been working out lately, so he might as well put the muscles to use. I just get him to snap the legs off. The tail that we're gonna be making is a ball jointed tail. So I need to drill a hole through where her legs are so that I can put some elastic there to string the tail later. So the tail that I'm gonna be making is, I've been wanting to revisit a ball jointed tail for a while because I made this mermaid three years ago and she is like the mermaid who shall not be named. She has a video on my channel, but it, the design is just not good. Um, when I bend it around, there's just a lot of gapping and it's not cute. I also use paper clay for it. As you can see, it's not holding up very well. So what are we doing? Um, I made a blueprint for the tail and I made two because I made the one too long. Um, but I am using Moonlight Jewels Siren uh, tail as inspiration for this, as well as Fairyland has a BJD, like a seahorse BJD. So I used those, like a combination of both for inspiration for this tail. And I'm going to be originally making it out of Super Sculpey. So I'm just getting like the whole shape down, but we're going to be casting it in resin. Each section of the tail is just a smaller version of the previous section. So it was relatively easy to shape them. Um, and this pointed thing at the bottom is actually what's gonna give you that shape that's going to make it so the tail is movable because that pointed bit actually covers up the lower bit as you move it up and down. So there shouldn't be any gaps like my previous tail had. To get the curly bit at the end of the tail that seahorses have, I am just going to be creating a J shape out of wire and then wrapping that in some super sculpey.
At this point, we're going to be baking it. So I baked it at 275. I can't remember for how long, but the instructions are on the packaging. And then I'm going to be editing the shape a little bit with epoxy sculpt. I wanted the bottom of the tail to have more of a segmented look like the top of the tail has or the bendy part of the tail has. So I'm going to be doing that with epoxy sculpt because epoxy sculpt is just what I'm most comfortable with. Um, and I just felt like with the super sculpty, it was like fine to work with, but I felt like I couldn't really get detailing with it. I don't know. It just wasn't, just wasn't working out for me. So I'm going to be doing that with epoxy sculpt. After I was done baking, I came to realize that some of the segments were just a little bit off. Um, some of them dipped too low on top and I just found that there was some gapping when I was moving them around. So I wanted to add some more epoxy sculpt to the top so that it would just be a little bit more flattering when the shape of the tail moved around. I strung her up to see what she would look like before I made a mold and cast her in resin and I think it looks pretty decent. In retrospect, I could have made the sides a bit flatter so that there was a more of a smoother transition there. But you live and you learn, um, whoopsie daisy. So there are quite a few mold making BJD videos on YouTube and after watching, I think all of them, I still had quite a few questions. So I wanted to be a little bit detailed with this process of me making the tail. The tools that you need for this are silicone to make a mold out of, um, modeling clay, basically clay that doesn't dry, and I'm going to be putting the silicone into Legos. I'm using Legos to make like a box around this. So you have to put the piece inside the clay. Um, you just have to kind of like submerge it a bit into the clay. I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to have a the silicone going through the channel where I wouldn't have the piece of the tail stuck inside the silicone. I just couldn't f quite figure out how to do it. Um, so I'm putting a tiny piece of clay into the channel and I'm just gonna drill a tiny piece of the tail. That's just the easiest thing that I could think of to do for this. But you have to bring the clay very close around the piece of the tail. This is so that you can get the mold very exact. This small piece of clay that I'm adding, I'm putting it right up against the tail piece. This is going to act as a hole once the mold is done so that I can pour resin into the mold. I'm creating a box of Legos around the piece and I'm not going to I spent so much on Legos. I, also, I spent so much on this tail. Like, I think I went into this not quite grasping how expensive it was going to be. It was expensive. You really need to smooth the clay right up against the Lego so that there's no like drips of silicone where it shouldn't be. And I'm creating little holes inside the clay. I think this is for air bubbles. I don't quite remember. I watched a lot of videos. Um, it was a lot of information. I only had little cups, so I sent my husband to the store for like normal big cups and he got these beer cups and there's only four of them and they were like five dollars. So that's what we're going to be using. <laughs> the silicone I'm using is Umu 30 and it's a two part mixture that you have to mix one to one and you pretty much have to mix like with every step you pour and then you mix and then you pour them together and then you mix. So there's just like a lot of mixing. It looks like I'm mixing fast, but that's just because the footage is sped up. I'm mixing pretty slow. Um, and it's, it's a very pretty process when you're doing this. Like the pink is a, just a very nice bubblegum pink and the blue is a very nice blue and they make a very nice purple and it's kind of aesthetic. After six hours, we are taking the mold off and I'm taking the Legos off and then I'm also taking the chunk of clay off. And you wanna to try to take that chunk of clay off as cleanly as possible because if you take it off kind of messy, it's just gonna be a harder cleanup for you because you wanna get all of the clay off of there. Any remnants would mess up your mold, I imagine, but I got most of it off. There's a little tiny bit of chunks. This clay's a little bit sticky, um, but I'm taking a needle and I'm just sort of taking the leftovers off and you don't want to dislodge that piece when you're taking the clay off make sure you don't do that it'll just kind of imagine mess up your mold a little bit and also don't dislodge that clay that is going to be our uh, channel to put the resin inside of the mold 
We're gonna be pouring more silicone on top of there and since silicone stick to silicone, you need to use some sort of like vegetable oil to make it so it doesn't stick. So I, a lot of people use melted Vaseline, but I have Pam, I figured this would work. For some reason I have like tons of Pam. I don't know, I think I went through a period <laughs> of liking non-fatty oil. But um, I sprayed it on and then I spread it out with a paintbrush and then I poured more silicone on top. Here's how they turned out. They turned out pretty good. I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I actually figured out though. So obviously I'm a novice at this. I thought that I could probably, okay, I read up online that Mold Star 30 is better than Umu 30. I thought they were the same thing. They're not the same thing. Um, and I tried to mix two types of silicone. This is what happens when you do that. See, it didn't cure like around the piece. The piece cured, but around it didn't. It still works but it's gross. So in case you're wondering, um, this is what happens when you mix two types of silicone. Disgusting. I'm still using it because we ain't wasteful in this house and honestly it did the job, so whatever. Um, I rubber banded all of the two pieces of silicone together and I bought this epoxy resin off of Amazon. I think it was like one of the cheaper ones. It came with all this cool stuff though, like sick. Um, one of the most useful things that it came with were pipettes, pipettes. Um, which I'll show you in a second, but I just took the two parts and I mixed them all together This whole project was a lot of mixing I basically mix I poured and mixed and then I poured them together and then I mixed some more and With epoxy you need to mix very slowly because it creates less bubbles This resin is a one-to-one -one ratio so you need to mix equal parts of both and I was looking up some videos um, of how to color resin. So I know you can use alcohol inks, but alcohol inks look a little bit transparent. And I didn't want that for a couple reasons. Um, the main one being I just didn't want to deal with the bubbles that come with something looking a little bit more transparent. So I found this lovely gentleman. I'm going to link his video down below because it was really kind of cool. Um, and he said that you can mix acrylic paint with resin to color it. Um, you can only, you should only use a little bit of acrylic paint, but I used that and then I used a little bit of Pearl X pigment. It turned out quite a bit darker than I expected it to. Um, it's still a really pretty color, but it looks like wine. So I guess that's just something to keep in mind if you ever use this method to color resin. Oh, it's me, Pipettes. I'm definitely gonna buy some of these because they were just really useful for this project. Um, I recommend if you ever use this method to buy these pipette things, but I put them into the hole and I'm filling up the molds that way. I honestly don't know what the plan was if these didn't come in this epoxy kit because I don't think like a spoon, it would just been really messy. <laughs> While I'm making the tail, I also wanted to make a gem for her weapon later. And I'm only mixing just some chunky glitter with some clear resin. And I bought a bunch of like gem molds off of Amazon. So I'm using me pipettes and I'm just putting them into the gem mold. Now it's time to demold some things. So this turned out great. <laughs> like I wanna make some more little gems because this turned out really good. These on the other hand. Okay, so there was some issues. Um, let me just show you. So we take it off and half of it's missing. Why? I think it got stuck in the, the hole. Uh, why'd that happen? I don't really know. So basically, None of these were perfect. Um, this one turned out pretty good, but there's a little bit at the end there that's just not filled in. So I basically had to touch up all of them. All of them I had to do two rounds for, um, which I mean, it could be worse. Some of them had little touch ups like this one and then others I had to fill up half of the part of the section of the tail. Um, this one actually turned out great, which I think is the only one that I used the Mold Star mold for, like for all of it. So yeah, I actually really like the Mold Star mold. Um, I think it's like a little bit more heavy dirt, heavy dirt or <laughs> heavy duty than the Umu. So maybe that's something to keep in mind if you guys want to try some mold making. But I had to clean up all of these. Um, as you can see, none of them are perfect, but they're pretty easy fixes. Some of them had bubbles in them and I had to fill those in with UV resin, which I did off camera. 
I cleaned up everything with an X-Acto blade and wire cutters uh, just to make everything as perfect as I could. I did also have to go in and sand everything. And at the end of the tail, I forgot to put like a groove on the top to basically make a joint there. So I had to go back in with a saw and do that. Y'all, I bought a drill especially for this project and I wanted to show you guys it because it's pink and I like it. So like I said at the beginning, um, I have a little tiny bit inside the channel of resin. Um, so I'm just drilling through those. To sand the pieces down and the parts where they had like the chunk coming off uh, where I poured the resin through, I'm wet sanding. Google says it's good to wet sand resin. It's also just healthier for you. And I'm using my hand drill to drill a hole into the bottom part of the tail so that I can make a joint out of it. To make that joint, I'm using a needle that I am cutting with wire cutters and then I'm taking epoxy glue and gluing it in place. By the way, did you guys know this stuff is toxic? The more you know. I mean, I should have just known that because it smells like crap and I feel like everything that smells like crap or chemicals is toxic, but that's why I'm wearing gloves because it's bad for you. I'm also wearing a mask when I'm using it, which you can't see. But it's a two part thing, you spin it all together and then I'm just putting it on top of where the needle is. See, y'all may have noticed that my pieces are matte. Why are they matte? Because the silicone's matte. Why is the silicone matte? I don't know. But uh, I want it to be shiny. So I'm taking some gloss and I'm just adding that to the pieces in a thin coat because I don't want it to be like too, too shiny and I also don't want it to get sticky. I didn't want her tail to just be red. I wanted to incorporate the color of her hair to it. So I took a really yellowy gold and I'm just adding dots of that all on the tail. Finally, on to my favorite part, the face up. So I spray the doll uh, three times Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask and we get on into drawing on her face. So how are we doing this lady? So I wanted to sketch in one of her eyes um, as normal, which is what I'm doing here. And I wanted to go with kind of like a smaller eye shape. I didn't want her eyes to be too big. Um, but for her other eye, I wanted her, I mean, she's a knight, okay? So she's been through some stuff. She's been in some fights. She's a badass. Um, and I wanted to give her a scar on her other eye. And I was thinking about how I could do it. I've seen other artists do them where they give them like a scar on the eye and then they make the eye like blind. Um, and I think that's really cool looking. But I was looking at some character designs that I like and I specifically really like Guts from Berserk who has one of his eyes closed. Um, and I wanted to try that out. So I gave her one closed eye and it has a scar on it. Or rather it's going to have a scar on it. Right now it's just closed. I blushed her cheeks with some pink blush, like I typically do, but for her nose, um, I normally just put blush on the tip of the nose and just kind of like keep it pushing, but I wanted her to have like a little sun-kissed look, a little sunburnt look, so I put some on across the middle of her nose. I'm keeping her makeup relatively minimal. To be honest, I always kind of keep makeup relatively minimal on doll repaints because I just kind of prefer it that way. but. I didn't want her to look overly glam or have like any kind of intense lip color because she's a knight, okay? She got other stuff to do. She's protecting the princesses. She's taking care of the gals. All right, she ain't got time for it. In addition to using the pinks and reds on the face, I am also using browns, blues, and purples and whites just to add more definition to the face.
Of course, I gotta add some shading to Gigi's dimple chin. It's actually one of my favorite parts of her sculpt. Um, when I was like 16, I really, really, really wanted a dimple chin. I have kind of grown out of that. I, I like my non-dimple chin now, but I still have a, like a vast appreciation for dimple chins. I always feel the need to mention this um, because I know that the blue looks very intense here, but once I spray it with MSC, it dulls down quite a bit. Of course, I'm adding veins around the face, and I feel like I've heard some people say that like veins don't really work out for them. I feel like the trick to veins is using an incredibly light blue pencil and also kind of a crappy light blue pencil. Like this Faber-Castell pencil is not very pigmented at all. Um, I probably, I don't really use it that much aside from for this specifically because it's not very pigmented. So it doesn't leave dark blue lines around her face. It leaves very faint light blue uh, lines, which is kind of perfect for veins. I also feel like not overdoing them is also kind of key because if you just have too many lines, it just looks a little bit messy. Um, so I'm doing them on a lot of parts of the face, but I'm not overdoing them and adding too many branches to the veins. That's just my vein two cents. I gave her blue eyes. They're going from like a darker blue to a more medium blue down at the bottom. She needs some lip wrinkles, so I'm taking a dark red pencil and I'm going to the middle line of her lips and on the top lip I'm flicking up from that line and on the bottom lip I'm flicking down. To intensify the eye color and to help with the gradient on the eyes, I'm taking some pastel with a q-tip and I'm going from a darker blue to a lighter blue. Since her face and mainly her eyes got a lot of shading on them, I'm going to be taking a white colored pencil and I'm just adding and bringing back the highlights with more sharper flicks of white lines. She needs a pupil, so I took a black uh, pencil. I think this is a Faber-Castell. I really like the Faber-Castell for just like sharp things and I wanted her pupil to be kind of sharp, but I am going over it with some paint as well to make it an even deeper black. To create a bit of a shadow from her upper lid onto her iris as well as the white of her eyes, I'm stamping a bit of black pastel down. I'm not having too much on my brush because I don't want this to be too overwhelming, but I'm also doing this on the inner and the outer portion of the eyelids. I wanted her to have really thick, full, blonde slash yellow eyebrows. Like she's like a Viking queen, Viking mermaid seahorse queen. I wanted her brows to have a little bit of darker hair than the blonde or yellow that she has for eyebrow hair, so I'm taking a very, very light brown pencil and I'm just adding a couple flicks of that for individualized hair. To bring a little bit of highlight to the eyeballs, I added a ring of light blue around the iris.
this rose gold pencil is uh, my favorite. <laughs> I just really like it for adding color to the waterline. And I'm also, since her skin is so pink, it looks really nice on the eyelids as well. Taking some gold pearl X, I added some of that to her lids underneath her eyes as well as her lips. For the scar, um, I kind of just looked at the scars that I have and they're just sort of like a very light color. So in this case, I'm using white and then I'm adding a red line around it later. For lashes, I'm not doing too many flicks of them. Um, I kind of held myself back a little bit with them and I really like how it turned out. On the closed eye, I sort of overdid a little bit, but on the open eye, I really like those lashes. Um, I'm using a Faber-Castell black pencil. The lead for these is very hard, so it gives you a very sharp line. If you guys have trouble with eyelashes, I recommend grabbing one of these. Um, they just work really well for me. Or, I think in one of my last videos, I mentioned you guys how I really like Micron pens for like very, very thin lines. I feel like they're also pretty good for lashes. I don't typically use them for lashes, not because they don't work, but because I kind of like a more feathered flick that I can get with putting down a pencil and then going top of it with paint. Um, that's just my preferred method, but if y'all have a hard time, I don't know, maybe try it. Taking some gold paint, I added a line down the middle of her lip. I like adding some flicks of rose gold to lashes. I think it specifically looks really nice on her because her skin tone is so pink and it just kind of looks like an extension or shadow of the lashes. I add some duochrome pink pearl X powder to the bottom of the lashes. With a duochrome purple watercolor, I'm adding a line of that to her lashes as well as a dot on her pupil. We're finally done, or almost done, at least the face up. Um, I'm taking some Vallejo gloss and adding that to her lips. This is her finished face up and I actually went back in and edited her catch lights a little bit. So I made them a little bit less uh, square and more kind of pointed. I don't know if anybody notices except for me, but her face up is done and I really, really like it. So Gigi has like a tattoo on her chest and I don't like it. So I'm going to be sanding that off. We've got to blush her body. So I use the same tones that I use in her face on her body and I'm just blushing everything. I love blushing mermaid bodies because it takes me like 10 minutes. <laughs> it's just really fast because it's only a torso. After all that, it's finally time to string her together. So I just take some elastic and I pull it through all her little pieces.
I think she looks pretty good. Like, I'm not really, I don't really have too many complaints. I think I'm pretty happy with how her tail came out. We're gonna be making some armor out of some craft foam. So I'm making a helmet as well as a chest piece. And I'm gonna be molding the helmet onto my first Gigi that I painted. She looks busted. Um, I didn't, I couldn't get the MMC to work for me, so. Listen, mood on up in the world, but I am taking a candle and I'm just heating up the foam and molding it to the head so that I can get the right shape. I molded the chest armor using the same method, and for her chest armor, I'm extremely inspired by Zendaya's 2018 Met Gala look. Like, he's so good. Have you guys seen it? I'm gonna show you a picture of it, but I sewed together all of the armor. I wanted her helmet to be spiky, so I'm taking some wire and I'm cutting it with a wire cutter and then sticking that up through the middle of her helmet. All these sewing marks are just not super believable for armor. So I'm gonna be taking some paper clay and going over it and just really smoothing it out. Putting paper clay on foam is not easy, by the way, if you're wondering. Uh, it just takes a lot of patience. A lot of the wire fell off for the spikes, so I'm just gonna be popping it back up through the middle and then just building up all those spikes with some paper clay. This is what it looks like when it's done and okay, so it looks awful, but the cool thing about paper clay is that it sands down really, really, really well. So once I start sitting it down, it's gonna look way more uniform. So the paper clay was kind of like popping up when I was sanding it and just sort of moving the foam around. So I'm taking some Elmer's glue on, I'm just going over where that clay is so that it just has something on top of it to give it a little bit more reinforcement. On to painting. So we are painting everything all of her armor with the same colors. So I'm going down with black first. Um, and I just feel like whenever I'm making armor or anything that's supposed to look metallic, it just looks better when you have a base of black. Um, it makes it so that you can't really get super bright colors, but looks a little bit more believable as metal. On top of the black paint, I'm using the same red paint that I used for the tail, and I'm just putting that on top of the black. And then on top of that, I'm using the Arteza metallic red paint. And that, or actually, I think it's pink. It's like a really dark kind of like cherry color, like that. Um, I'm putting that down on top. I googled Atlantis symbols and basically a bunch of like random shapes and kind of swirly bits came up. So we're going to be painting her armor with those things. I have some gold bits and bobs that I'm going to be decorating the helmet with. I have these like gem holder things and they look perfect on the spikes of the helmet. So I'm hot gluing those in place. I wanted to give her a visor john, so I cut some gold vinyl and I'm going to be hot gluing that in place.
I decided her helmet was a little bit too perfect, so I'm scratching it up a little bit with a clay tool. With foam and vinyl, I added some fin-like things on the sides of her helmet. I have a thing for adding chains where they don't really make sense, um, and I wanted one going across her helmet, so that's what we're doing. I decided the visor just like needed something, so I took some foam and I painted it in the colors of the helmet and I glued that around the visor as like a border or a frame or whatever. I'm decorating the chest piece with similar stuff that I used on the helmet as well as painting more of those random Atlanta symbols on the chest. She needs a cape, so of course I'm using some gold fabric and I'm just sewing that. It's basically just like a square of fabric to the shoulders. I feel like the age old question for mermaids is whether or not to give them clothes and I decided since this was an unconventional mermaid, she was getting a t-shirt. Or not a t-shirt, but like a long sleeve shirt. It's got some peekaboo action on the chest though. She's a knight, so she needs a weapon, and I was just going to make her a sword, but then I was like, you know what? This is not very unconventional, but I want to make a trident, so I did. So I wrapped some wire around the top of a skewer, and then I hot glued that in place, and this is going to work as the armature wire. Taking my trusty epoxy sculpt, I went around the wire with that, and this is going to look real janky, but again, sanding is your friend, so I'm going to sand it down, and it's going to look pretty presentable. It goes from this to this with sanding. <laughs> I painted the whole thing black and I'm going to be going on top of that with some metallic gold and then also some metallic like cherry pink paint. The same that we used for the armor. Okay, so again with these things, so I actually cut the bottom off of one and I'm going to be putting that up onto the trident. Wow, the many things you can do with these like little gem thingies. Um, and I'm going to be hot gluing that gem that I made earlier on top. To fancify it, I am wrapping some wire around the gem as well as the handle. I'm taking another one of these uh, gem holder thingies and I'm just putting it to the bottom because listen, it makes everything look good. Look how fancy, oh my gosh. I gave her two wee little braids on the side of her head and that is the finished doll. Um, I hope you guys like her. Wait, hold on. Actually, that's not the finished doll. I made her a little belt. I just found it in my uh, doll stock box and I painted it black and then painted it with the red paint. And this is her. Oh my goodness, it's her. Um, I'm not gonna lie, if I sounded kind of weird during this voiceover, I got gum surgery today. 
and my whole face hurts right now and I want to go eat mashed potatoes. So yeah, I hope you guys like her. I pretty, I pretty dig how she turned out. I think she looks kind of cool. I'm really happy that I know how to use epoxy resin now. I feel like I learned some stuff during this project and that's always good. So if you guys um, want to go check out the other mermaiders, they are linked down in the description box. I think everybody did a great job. And um, happy mermaid, everyone. I hope you guys like this video. Like this video if you like this video. Subscribe. It makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye.